Gareth, first of all, um, obviously you beat the number one ranked side in the world on Sunday. Um, I don't think you quite got the credit that you deserve for that because of everything else that's going on at the moment in the football world. How does that performance and result rank compared to other results and performances in your time as England manager? I think always difficult to compare because, you know, the most pressure for the team was always uh, in the middle of tournaments. So the World Cup games, um, you know, then Colombia, Sweden were big. Obviously, Spain away was a big one for us. Croatia home to qualify for the Nations League was big. So, but we are where we are now as a team. And for this team, with um, some experience, but also Marcus at 23, Dominic Calvert-Lewin at 23, uh, Declan Rice 21, Trent 22, I think, uh, Mason 21. Um, a really brilliant experience for them. Um, I think should give us some belief, but also we know that there's so much more to keep working at, to keep improving at. And whatever the result was on Sunday is only a really good result if we get a win against Denmark. So we have to put that consistency. We've shown what's possible on a one-off occasion. To be a top team, we've got to do that consistently well. Obviously, uh, over the past couple of days, there's been a lot of focus on Harry Kane's uh, injury situation is he 100% fit at the moment and is there any danger of this becoming a club versus country row between you and Spurs I don't I don't really understand the story because um, he's been fully fit since the end of last week just before the last game Um, he would have started the last game but hadn't had enough training time really Um, he was obviously fine during the game, so he's fit, available. Um, I, I didn't really understand the stories that have been run, so where that's coming from is, is certainly not the conversations we've been having with Spurs medically um, and is not something that is really affecting us in the camp. As far as you're concerned, is he 100% fit to start tomorrow if you pick him? Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's um, He hasn't had an injury, um, so... He's um, he was feeling um, muscle soreness, you know, delayed muscle soreness, which often can happen to athletes. But um, there was no injury at any point, so we, we don't risk players. You know, I said this before the camp last week. I've been a player. My priority is always the welfare of players. We've never risked the player. Um, we've ended up very rare occasions a couple of injuries during matches. That's that's pretty much unavoidable. Um, but we've never lost a player through uh, an error in terms of our training loading. And um, we pride ourselves on looking after the players. We want them fit. We want them as sharp as possible for the games. Our our issue with Harry before Sunday's game was um, to be able to perform at the highest level. Um, Now he's got another additional couple of days training in. It's not even an issue. How much of a blow is it for you that... uh... Ben Chilwell and Kieran Trippier have had to leave the camp. Well, it, it's not ideal, clearly, but um, we're used to dealing with these things. It's so hard to uh, to have a squad without withdrawals, without injuries. Um, the number of matches that everybody's got um, at the moment is obviously adding into that. Last month, we were without Marcus, Harry Maguire, um, Jordan Henderson, you know, even on Sunday, we start without Raheem, we start without Harry, we had to get Jordan off the pitch. So it's very complicated um, for everybody at the moment, but we've just got to um, focus on winning games and playing well, winning games, keep developing as a team. Um, we have to be adaptable. And when one player is missing, it's always an opportunity for others. And we've seen already in the last couple of matches that when people have opportunities, they're ready to grab them. If I can just bring Marcus in now. Uh, Marcus, obviously it was a fantastic honour for you to get the MBE last week. Just talk us through what the last few days have been like for you. Um, It's obviously been a a good few days. Um, I was aware of the news um, sort of coming into camp and um, I probably 
or thought of ways to deal with it beforehand. Um, but the the important thing for me was to just to to come in, like Gareth said, I missed the missed the last camp, and um, you know I obviously wasn't wasn't happy about it. Um, so I was just excited to come back with the with the team and and play games and win games together. Um, and you know we've managed to to get two wins so far, and it's important to finish it off right now. And obviously, if the Euros were starting tomorrow, everybody presumes that Gareth's first choice front three would be uh, you, Harry and Raheem. Is that the way you feel or are you always looking behind your shoulder because there's so many good players coming through? Um, you know, for me, I think the the atmosphere of, of the squad, um, you know, terrific, to be honest. Um we all understand that we're, we're all together as one, and um, especially in in tournament football, which um, you know probably in the World Cup, I, I realised the most. You, you need a squad to to do great things, and um, you know, looking forward, I think it's 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 a, a big strength of ours to have so many players that can make differences on the pitch. Um, and yeah, we just have to we have to work together and and whatever way we can we can beat a team. That's what we have to do to to get the win and. Um, you know, the, the the more opportunities we have to do that, it just shows the, the strength that we have. I'm not usually a Financial Times reader, but I did buy a copy of it recently because there was a big interview uh, with you in the FT where you were having lunch with their sports correspondent. And one thing that came across is how busy you are. Uh, there's so much going on in your life uh, with everything you do. Does that ever impact on your focus on the pitch and on training and on football? Um, for me, no. Um, I think it's it's something that, um, you know, I have a team that, that work behind me and um, we make sure that we're all on, on the same page. But a lot of the work is is done, you know, months in advance. Um, and I think it's important for me to, to keep doing that. Um, and as well, it's the only way for me to keep keep on top of it. Like you said, it's there's a lot going on. Um, but you know, at the moment, I feel in a good headspace. Um, I'm comfortable with with doing the two things, and you know, I feel ready to to train every day and and, and play the game. So, I think um, you know, if it was taking a toll, then um, I'd have to look at a different way of of doing things, and um, you know, find a way to to each support the kids and and keep my career um, going in the right direction. Gareth, if I can just ask you, uh, we've all heard the news this afternoon that Cristiano Ronaldo has tested positive for coronavirus. How worrying is that? We're seeing quite a few cases now of players testing positive while they're on international duty. Do you think it's even right that we are playing internationals at the moment, considering what's going on in the world? Well, I think if if that's the argument, then that applies to club football as well, really, because there's obviously um, positive tests everywhere in in our society and football is going to be no different. Um, What we're trying to do is make sure the environment here internationally is as secure as it can be. Um, We can't ever guarantee because the situation for everybody with this virus is so complicated, but um, fortunately, all of our testing processes this week have ended up with with negative tests across the board. Um, but as you've seen with Portugal, there is always that possibility. Final question from me, uh, just on Project Big Picture. What is your reaction to the proposals and what do you think it would mean if the so-called Big Six were running English football in the future? Well... I spoke briefly after the game on Sunday because I hadn't had a chance to read anything. I've had minimal opportunity to read too much detail. Um, So there there are so many different proposals that it's quite hard to to, uh, articulate at the moment. I need some time once we finish these camps. At the moment, the days are full with studying the opposition, preparing the team, preparing the coaching sessions. so the television in my hotel room hasn't even been switched on for the last seven days. Um, that's just the way it is. These camps are so intense. I, I know there's a big story out there. Um, it's not clear to me who's uh, who's proposing it or, or what all the implications are. I've read some things that seem quite good common sense and others that seem a bit left field. So 
but I, I can't give you a considered opinion because I haven't really had the time to, to study it all. Thank you. Thanks, Carvey. Next, we go to Carrie Brown from Bean Sports. I think, sorry, you're on mute, Carrie. Sorry. Um, hello, Gareth. Just following up on Project Big Picture, Greg Clark has, uh, George has given a statement and he said that as, as soon as it became as soon as it became clear that the principal aim of these discussions became the concentration of power and wealth in the hands of a few clubs with a breakaway league muted as a threat, I, of course, discontinued my involvement to get a common, to look towards building a common consensus. Is that what you want to find, a common consensus in football? I think that's a matter for our our hierarchy at the FA um, for the Premier League for the EFL to discuss I don't really know enough about it all um, I, I wasn't aware the chairman was involved um, so that yeah I'm England manager others run the FA and the two things are integrated but in many ways separate and um, that's that sounds to me like government governance um, we're, we're performance here and um, we've got to prepare for performance. Thank you. And if I could have a question to Marcus Rashford as well. Marcus, um, Donald Trump today has mocked the NBA finals, dropping in revenue and saying it's because of the athlete's stance against for Black Lives Matter, for anti-racism, for equality. So I wonder what kind of message and if you've thought of what message it will send when you take a knee in Buckingham Palace and are recognised by Her Majesty for what you've achieved, what message that image will send to the world? Um, you know, for me, it, a, a lot of things have started from um, speaking out on things that, that I believe in. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll, of course, be a, be a proud moment for me and, and for my family. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm just happy that we've managed to help, um, you know, as many kids as, as, as we've helped so far. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just pleased with that, and I'm I'm looking to just take the next steps going forward and helping more people. Do you have any further questions? A few more minutes. Yep, uh, we we'll go to Nizar Kinsella from Goal. Hi, um, this one's for Gareth. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, with two fullbacks pulling out the squad, um, one on the left and one on the right, um, it seems that you know the left side is is more of an issue really for you. So I just wanted to talk a bit about, you know, the left back options and and left footers even in the defence and and you know maybe a lack of options in that regard for you um, at, at this time. Um, yes, but I think we've adapted well and. Um... I think Belgium were the same at the weekend. Castagnier played left wing back, was was very impressive, uh, and is a right footer. Um, we played with Ashley Young there, getting to a World Cup semi final, who was a an absolute Trojan for us. So, uh, you know, you you adapt as a team and you find different solutions for players who probably need to cut inside. You lose a bit of the dynamic of a player being going able to go outside, but. Frankly, most clubs play inverted wingers anyway. So the days where a left footer or a left winger got on, you know, got to the byline and whipped it in with his left foot, um, there's far more complexities to the game than that. There are moments where it's better to have a left footer for sure. Um, but this, this week we don't have one available that we think is playing at the level um, needed to uh, to help us win the matches at this uh, at this sort of level of competition. Is it a case of ideally you would want one though? Would you ideally want a left-footed uh, left back, or is it a case that you'd be totally comfortable going into a major tournament with just sort of right footers or converted right backs in that role? Well, there's a lot of things we'd ideally like, but we've got to adapt and adjust to what we've got. We're very happy with the players we've got. Um, at the moment, we've got a tremendous spirit. Um, we've got some talented players. We've got a lot of work to do to improve. Um, we're, we're a long way from the finished article, but we continue to progress. We continue to get decent results. And we want to take that forward into the game with Denmark, who 
have a very good record. They're not a team that lose many games and we've got to be totally focused to, to win that match. Excellent. Our next we'll go to Kieran Canning from AFP. <clears throat> Hi, Gareth. J just <clears throat> following up on the question about whether international football should be being played at the moment, uh, do you have any fear that the November games will go ahead given the number of players that have been ruled out and the pressure that's likely to come from clubs now um, who are the ones paying the players' wages? Well, the reality of the world at the moment is that we don't know which parts of the country will be in lockdown, which parts of the world will be in lockdown, what the rules will be. So I think in this day and age, you just have to live from week to week. Um, there's no reason that international football should be a higher risk. It's a bit more complicated. We're, we're in a fortunate position that all of our, or the majority of our players are just travelling within England to get to us. That's the first thing. We obviously have Jaden and Kieran who, who travel from abroad. Um, but it's easier for us to get the group together initially and then we just try to take um, the right precautions. We've always followed the Premier League guidelines because our head of medicine has been on that panel right the way through. Um, to this point, we've been fortunate. I can't say, you know, we, we're not going to sit here and pat ourselves on the back and say, oh, we've had no positive tests because we're all aware that there's an element of fortune in in how that could play out. You don't know what with kids at school now, with anything, it doesn't necessarily mean that people have been in the wrong place or doing something they shouldn't. You, you could just be unfortunate and pick this virus up. So um, we'll we'll prepare properly and try to protect everybody as best we can. Um, but we understand, as the clubs do, um, that there is always an element of risk. OK, we've got time for a couple more, starting with Sam Matterface at ITV. Hi, Gareth. Um, I spoke earlier on today with uh, Kasper Hjolman and I asked him a similar sort of question as I'm going to ask you, which is the game in the Park and Stadium was not a memorable match. Um, it was a tactical match, but it was at a stage of the season where players were really finding their fitness. Um, what sort of style of game are you expecting tomorrow night? He said he's expecting a much more open affair. I think it's always difficult to know what sort of game because that depends on the approach of the opponent really but we're definitely physically in a much better place than we were for that game I mean we had guys who were playing their first minutes of the season for many their first minutes of pre-season in fact and uh, we had people who'd come off a week two weeks holiday we had people that <laughs> um, been ill so it was an amazing uh, set of fixtures to have to deal with really and set of circumstances but we're in a better place now um the load of the whole group across the week we've managed to manage very well so nobody's been overplayed and we're looking forward to the game it's um it's a good test you know it would be the beauty of the nations league is that it's best 16 teams in europe best against best we took a lot from it the last time it was a great experience for us as well as um you know, to get to the semi-finals, and if we're to get to semi-finals again, we need to win uh, against Denmark on Wednesday. Okay, thanks, Sam. And we've got time for one quick one finally from Jack Pitbrook at the Athletic. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Jack. Um, you talked about the importance of the, the separation between government governance and performance that exists at the FA. And um, with that in mind, is it frustrating to have Kieran having to pull out to deal with his FA betting case? Well, there's not a lot I can say about that, really. Um, it's not something that's in my control. Um, so I've got to focus on preparing the team with the players I've got available. And um, we always find solutions. It's an opportunity for somebody else. And if I lose focus on the job in hand, you know, there's a million distractions, um, frankly. So, you know, this is this is another distraction. But um, it's something I've got to plough on through. Okay. Thanks, Jack. And we'll end it there. Appreciate your time today, guys.